Ed Kemper, 10 victims. Ted Bundy, at least 30. Gary Ridley, 49. If we were to talk about serial killers as much as they have murders on their conscience, then the most famous ones like Richard Ramirez or David Berkowitz would not have as many publications about them as they do now. We would dedicate the most space to someone completely different, about whom there is not as much frequent or extensive discussion. Sources are scarce in articles or information about him. Although it's strange because Samuel Little, who is in question, was extremely brutal, had no mercy for anyone, and may be responsible for the murder of at least 93 women. If this number is true, there was no worse beast than him in the USA. The history of Samuel Little is extremely complicated. Although he had been behind bars since the 60s, he only answered for the murders in 2014. Many of his victims remain unidentified, and their sad eyes look at us from portraits drawn by the killer himself. Let's start from the beginning, though. Samuel Little, actually Samuel McDowell, was born on June 7, 1940, in Reynolds, Georgia. The circumstances of his birth are not entirely clear, as Little himself claimed that his mother was Bessie May, a teenage prostitute. He said the woman abandoned him right after giving birth. According to investigators, Samuel may have been born in prison. Meanwhile, documents indicate that his mother was a maid. His father, Paul McDowell, was only 19 when his son came into his life. The family moved to Lorain, Ohio, there, the boy was mainly taken care of by his grandmother. Little Samuel caused a lot of problems almost from the beginning. He was undisciplined and also did poorly in school. Instead of focusing on learning, he began to fantasize. And that started in kindergarten. He said he first thought of strangling when he felt a preschool teacher touch his neck. It was this part of the female body that he began to focus on. He constantly looked first at girls, then at classmates and partners, specifically at their necks. As a teenager, he began collecting crime magazines that featured illustrations of strangled women. When he was 16, he was convicted of burglary and sent to a reformatory. He was also expelled from school. This marked the beginning of his criminal activities. He was not particularly concerned about his time in the correctional facility. He had no ambition to steer his life in a different direction. Therefore, the reformatory in 1956 was just a prelude to what the following years would bring Samuel. After his release, he moved to Florida with his mother. Since he did not complete school, he focused on finding a job. He worked, among other places, at a cemetery and in an emergency service. He also started training as a professional boxer. However, sports were not enough to keep him off the criminal path. He continually got into conflicts with the law, drove under the influence of alcohol, and had a record of fraud, shoplifting, solicitation, armed robbery, assault with violence, and attempted rape. By 1975, he had been arrested 26 times in 11 states. His first murder, as he admitted years later, occurred in 1979. His victim was supposed to be Mary Jo Brosley. She had a 17-year-old son whom she had abandoned in June of the same year. She was an alcoholic and also suffered from anorexia. Therefore, her family delayed reporting her disappearance. They thought she had gone on another drunken spree from which she would return sooner or later. However, when she did not appear, the family reported her missing after two weeks. But the trace of the woman disappeared. Little is known about her daily life in her last months. However, it was established that she met Samuel Little on New Year's Eve. They were together in Miami. The murderer later testified that the victim was wearing a floral dress and a gold chain. He even played with it for a while before he strangled her to death. In 1971, another murder occurred. Here, however, we only have the victim's name, though it's unknown if it was real. Linda was about 22 years old. She also died in Miami in 71 or 72. Little could not specify the exact date. Marianne or Mary Ann died. Samuel drew her in one of his portraits. He said he met her in Miami. She was about 19 years old and a black transgender woman. He first saw her in a bar near 17th Avenue. A few days later, they met again. Little offered to take her home. 
Marion was renting an apartment with several roommates. When they arrived, one of her friends asked them to buy her cream. The teenager agreed and went with Samuel again. The man drove a gold Pontiac, which belonged to his stepfather. He readily agreed to go to the store. He drove onto the highway and at some point stopped the car on a driveway near a sugarcane field. There he attacked the woman and strangled her. Once he was sure that the victim was dead, he drove off to dispose of her body. In a conversation with FBI agents, he said, got out of the car, pulled her out, and drove her into the ropes back there, and pulled her deeper into the a path, a little path of running somewhere, I don't know where it led it to, but it was running deeper into the undergrowth. It's like uh, Everglades like that. And we ran into uh, uh, some water running. And, but before we got to the water, the earth was mushy. I turned loose and she fell into it face down. Samuel testified that the place where he abandoned Mary Ann's body was about three kilometers from Miami. According to him, the woman's remains were never found. Around the same time, Little killed another victim. However, he neither knew her name nor surname, nor could he specify her age. He only confessed that she was black and might have had some connection to the military. Samuel did not focus solely on victims of his own ethnic group. In 1972, he moved to the state of Maryland, and there, as he claimed, he took the life of a white woman, referred to in the media as Jane Doe. This is a common name and surname used in the USA in cases of unidentified remains. She might have been between 20 to 25 years old and, according to the man, originated from Massachusetts. He depicted her image in one of his sketches. In 1973, there were two more victims of Samuel, both named Sarah. One died in Florida, the other in Louisiana. In 1974, there were again two murders, again in Louisiana and also in Ohio. And as in the previous murders, there is also no information about the identity of the victims. In the following years, Samuel killed five women whom he could not identify. They lost their lives in Florida, Tennessee, Texas and Illinois in 1977. One of his victims was Yvonne Pless from Georgia. Her remains were only identified in 2023, confirming that she was killed by Little. She was about 20 years old at the time of her death. In the same year as Yvonne, Clara Birdlong also died. Her remains also had to wait many years for identification. This was only achieved in 2021. It was established that the woman had a gold tooth and also wore a wig. Her body was found about three, four months after her death. The family confirmed that the woman had disappeared in the 1970s. Witnesses, on the other hand, saw Clara traveling with a black man they were then in the state of Mississippi. It was there that the woman was murdered by Samuel Little. In the 1970s, Little killed many more victims. He later told investigators that he couldn't stop, as he claimed. He was also drawn to the fact that he remained unpunished. No one claimed the nameless victims. No one looked for them. Convinced of his invincibility, Little continued to hunt. In the early 1980s, he murdered Patricia Parker. She was 30 years old and a mother. The last time she was seen was at a nightclub in Tennessee. Her trail then went cold. Her remains were found after some time, but her family had to wait until 2020 for identification. Special Agent Joe Montgomery admitted, Since 1981, we have been conducting an open investigation into these remains, but despite the passage of years, the investigation remained unresolved. In 1982, investigators were very close to convicting Samuel and thereby stopping the series of murders. The man was arrested in Mississippi, where he faced the charge of murdering 22-year-old Melinda Rose Laprie, who disappeared in September of that year. But the jury did not convict him for this crime. In Florida, Little was also supposed to answer for the death of 26-year-old Patricia Ann Mount. Her body was also found in 1982. Witnesses testified that it was Little who was with the woman on the night she was last seen. But again, Samuel was extremely lucky. 
He was acquitted and by 1984 he was free again. He used his freedom as he had before, hunting for new victims. Little changed his area of operation and moved to California. He settled in the San Diego area. That same year, he was arrested again. This time, he was charged with kidnapping, beating and attempting to strangle 22-year-old Lori Barros. The woman miraculously avoided death. He was arrested a month after this attack when he was caught in a car with an unconscious and beaten woman. It soon became clear that he was responsible for the attempted murder of Lori. Samuel was thus brought to court for both these crimes and was sentenced to two and a half years in prison. He was released in 1987. Since he was not tied to any particular place, he once again decided to take a new direction. This time he chose Los Angeles. There, over the next month, he began to terrorize the streets. He committed at least 10 murders in this city in the 1980s. Although it's possible that this was already the beginning of the 1990s. Samuel killed about a 26-year-old woman in Fort Myers, Florida. Although he assured that he had known her for two years and even visited her family, he was not able to say her name. Therefore, investigators doubted that he really knew his victim that well. He assured that on the day of the murder, she was wearing shorts and looked nice. He talked to her for a while and she complained about her husband. Then she got into the car with Little. The man drove towards the railway tracks where they had sex. Afterwards, he strangled her with his own hands. He left her body in the grass. He testified that he set her pubic hair on fire. This victim was never identified. Little also satisfied his murderous appetite in the 90s. In Arkansas, he met a young woman who he believed might have been named Ruth, likely from North Little Rock. Samuel met her as she sat with friends in front of a house. He approached her, and then they went for a ride, which ended with a theft in a grocery store. Oh man, I loved her. I forget her name. Oh wait, I think it was Ruth. Okay. She was a heavy set, big old yellow girl, and had buck teeth. <laughs> it had a gap between the teeth everywhere. And she she was like a uh, honey colored skin. And she had, uh, like, her hair was not really long. It was, we was going shoplifting. We went to Sears. We went to uh, Kroger's. And that's where I got busted. Mm -hmm. They took me to jail. And she went and stayed in the car. And the manager of Kroger's, got, I guess he got tired of her laying on his property in, in that car. He called the, pole, the station where I was at in North uh, North Arkansas to drop the charges. Mm -hmm. So he can come down and get this gal and car out of him. They cut me loose. Samuel was released. He drove the woman to meet her boyfriend, but returned for her the next day. Then he strangled her. He abandoned her body near a cornfield. So I, I pulled her out of the car. She's too big for me to carry, carry her. So I just pulled her out of the car and laid her on that trash that was lit there. So was it like a corn stalk pile or was it? Yeah, a bunch of corn stalks. What could you see from there? Uh, I could see the highway. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the woods, is that way. In the following years, Samuel primarily killed in California, but also in Arizona, Ohio, Arkansas, and Nevada. Many of these victims were never identified. According to Little himself, his murderous activities lasted until 2005. Samuel was caught by the police in 2012 at a homeless shelter in Louisville, Kentucky. His apprehension was possible thanks to DNA testing. At the time of his killings, he left a lot of genetic evidence, which years later was matched to him. This way, he was linked to three murders on July 13, 1987. Lindy Alford, on September 3rd, also 1987, Guadalupe Duarte Apodaca was murdered. And on August 14th, Audrey Nelson Everett lost her life. The bodies of all three women were found on the streets of Los Angeles. Little was then transferred to this city. On January 7th, 2013, he was charged. 
Even then, the police had no idea that they had caught a serial killer responsible for the highest number of victims in US history. A few months after his arrest, it began to be suspected that Samuel might be responsible for a much larger number of victims than initially assumed. He himself insisted he was innocent and that there had been a mistake. But officers, analyzing his modus operandi and the places where he stayed, linked him to cases of missing or murdered women known since at least the 1980s. Most of these cases were unresolved and the fate of the victims was not determined. This changed when Samuel Little appeared in custody. An investigation was launched in which the man was suspected of being involved in at least 30 murders committed in the 1980s. The case of Melinda Laprie, who was murdered in 1982 and for which Samuel had already been tried, was reopened. The trial began in September 2014. The strongest evidence held by the prosecution was, of course, DNA testing. But a group of witnesses was also gathered who confirmed Little's presence with the missing women in many cases. He himself admitted nothing. He constantly insisted he was innocent. He also tried to attack the witnesses. However, the evidence gathered against him was too strong and he was found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole that same year. Four years after his arrest, Samuel began cooperating with the FBI. After long discussions, he confessed to the murder of other women, including Melissa Thomas, whom he strangled in 1996. Following these testimonies, he was again charged with murder and sentenced to additional life sentences. On November 13th, 2018, the District Attorney of Ector County in Texas announced that Little had confessed to dozens of murders in total. And it is very likely that between 1970 to 2005, he killed as many as 93 people. He operated in a total of 14 states. Then a wave of trials and identifications of remains discovered years ago began, and Little described his victims with extraordinary precision. He created a total of 30 portraits of murdered women, and at least one of them helped solve a case. It was a murder in Akron, Ohio. It quickly turned out that the man had a photographic memory. Despite the passage of years, he was still able to recall the exact appearance of the victims, their height, weight, hair color or teeth. He also told the police how he took their lives. The majority of Samuel's victims were prostitutes, drug addicts or homeless women. According to experts and the murderer himself, that's why they were targeted. Little counted on the fact that no one would claim these women, no one would look for them, and thus no one would ever be on his trail. As it turns out, he was wrong in this regard. He was eventually linked to a total of 60 murders, making him the worst serial killer in US history. Little said little about what he did with his victims. His descriptions usually ended with strangulation and dumping the bodies. But in a few cases, he admitted that the murders had a sexual motive. In 1996, he strangled a thin white woman. He killed her in the bathroom of an empty house, then partially undressed her and attempted to have intercourse. This attempt, however, was unsuccessful, so he put the woman's body in the bathtub and left. Earlier in 1984, he strangled a black woman. It was in Los Angeles near the freeway. After the murder, he had sex with the corpse then dragged the body to a more secluded place and left it there. Interestingly, Samuel had a steady partner during the years he was killing. It was Aurelia Jean Dorsey, who also participated in criminal activities. Although she didn't help him with the murders, she did assist in thefts. The couple stayed together until 1988, when their future together was cut short by the woman's unexpected death from a brain hemorrhage. Aurelia was 27 years older than Little. During his imprisonment, Samuel spoke with Gillian Lauren, who had been conducting journalistic investigations related to this murderer for years. Their meeting resulted in a book and a documentary miniseries. In Behold the Monster, Gillian wrote, Sam moved in a wheelchair, suffering from diabetes and heart disease. 
He wore standard prison pants made of shapeless denim, a blue cotton t-shirt with a print, and a pair of white orthopedic sneakers. Due to a finger amputation, the end of a pink scar from heart surgery protruded from the top of his shirt. He wore thinning hair of perverse white and a neat beard. Age spots discolored his skin, giving him the appearance of a decaying lizard. At first glance, he seemed like a frail and pitiable old man, but one could see the features of the man he once was, a powerful figure over six feet tall with hands like baseball gloves. Gravity had done its inevitable work, pulling his cheeks into lazy folds around his jaw, but one could still see his strong cheekbones, handsome face, and shining eyes that once soothed his victims. Sam pointed a finger at me. You, he said, you, my angel, have come to me from heaven. God knew I was lonely and sent you to me. You want a story for your book? Oh, I have a story. I came prepared to fight a dragon, but instead I found myself face to face with a lonely old man. As the author reported, their conversation started with Samuel's childhood, his first loves, passion for baseball, boxing, art, and also the travels which, as we now know, ended in a huge number of murders. Little also admitted he loved to draw, of course, women. He started doing this already in the correctional facility when he was 16 years old. Samuel also confessed that he perceived certain behaviors of women as a sign of consent to murder. For example, when one of the victims touched her neck, he knew he had to kill her. Furthermore, he saw this as the work of God. He took me on a journey to the past, when back alleys and bars in cities across the country offered a feast of low-hanging fruit and women whose eyes were already half dead. Women who, as he deeply believed in his heart, were just waiting for him to appear and finish the job. Sam believed that it was God gently laying a willing, still pulsating with life, neck right into his hungry hands. Samuel Little, in accordance with his sentence, never regained his freedom. He died in a Los Angeles County hospital on December 30th, 2020. Although the exact cause of death was not disclosed, it is known that Little was ill, struggling with diabetes and heart problems. At the time of his death, he was 80 years old. He talked about his murders with a smile, as if recalling old acquaintances and meetings about many of his victims. He also spoke affectionately, treating the murdered women as if they were former partners. The FBI is still working to solve all the murders that Samuel Little confessed to. The families of the victims have been waiting for years for the conclusion of these cases. About 30 cases attributed to Samuel are still unresolved.